Protect the black woman and child, the power is ours, it's KLX, UBVOA, the human liberator, King Leon next, with another Leaders Are Readers Challenge, read out loud challenge, you pick up a book, you record yourself reading one to three pages, and challenge your timeline to do the same, so the book that I'm going to be reading out of in this episode, or in this uh, uh, video is the art of achievement, mastering the seven C's of success in bi- business and life by Tom Morris. I'm starting on page 38. All right, page 38 is entitled "The Importance of Confidence." Why is confidence one of the most universal condi- conditions of success? Isn't it possible to succeed at something while having very little confidence along the way? Isn't it possible to be surprised by your success? A confident person believes that things will work out well. A genuinely surprised person cannot really have believed that at all. Of course, there are degrees of confidence and surprise, and they are inversely related. The more confident you are, that a particular event will happen, the less surprised you'll be when it does happen. Conversely, the greater your surprise is, the less confident you were. The very fact, the very fact that it is indeed possible to be surprised by your own success shows that achievement is at least sometimes possible without having been preceded by a perfect supreme confidence. And that's a good thing. It's fairly simple to nurture some measure of confidence in your mind and in your hearts and in the minds of your coworkers. But it's very difficult to, it's very difficult and extremely rare to be able to instill within anyone a maximal degree of positive belief in future outcomes. Right, that's interesting. All right, so again, if you're just tuning in, we're reading the Art of Achievement, read out loud challenge, um, and that's great. So, so it's like there's confidence. So he said it's confidence, and then there's being surprised, uh, being surprised at your success. If you're surprised at your success, is that confidence? Were you confident in your abilities? He said it is possible to achieve and 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 be surprised at your success. And if that's so, then that means that you weren't confident in the abilities or the outcome. You weren't sure of the outcome. So he, so Tom Morris, in the first two paragraphs, he defines clearly the difference, uh, or he creates some separation of achievement. When um, co- were people who confidently achieve and know that things were going to work out well, and then people who are surprised by it working out well. Perfect confident. I uh, uh, third paragraph. Perfect confidence is not necessary for success. An exceedingly high degree of confidence is not a strict requirement for many kinds of achievement. That's, that's, that's good to know. That's some good information right there. An exceedingly high degree of confidence is not a strict requirement for many kinds of achievement. Where well, I lost my... But the more difficult... But the more difficult a task is, the better positioned we are to handle it if we have a significant measure of initial confidence, or what the philosopher William James called precursive faith. <laughs> precursive faith, I like that. Precursive faith, that's like Napoleon Hill and, and applied faith. It's like the faith, like we're acting like we begin with the end in mind, like we already know the result and, and, and we're only starting because we believe in our ability to accomplish and achieve. And therefore, we're, 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 we're stepping with first step knowing that it's the, the result and the first step is, is the same, is the process. And, and we believe that, okay, let me, let, me not, let me not give a speech. Let me, this is a Leaders or Readers challenge. Hashtag Leaders or Readers. Pick up a book, record yourself, read in one to three pages. Challenge your timeline to do the same. Okay. 
The more difficult a task is, the better position we are to handle it if we have a significant measure of initial confidence, or what philosopher William James called precursive faith. Faith that literally runs ahead of or goes beyond the available evidence that we will indeed prevail. That's like closing your eyes and still, what do you see with your eyes closed? That's why I say, where there's no vision, the people perish. He said, the precursor faith that literally runs ahead. It's like the faith that my goals, my dreams, my results already exist in the energy form. He said, the type of faith, he said, it literally runs ahead or goes beyond all available evidence. As if you already know that we will indeed prevail. Right? That's deep. The easier task is the less matters of confidence. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me switch. All right, let me see, let me see, where, where did I go? The easier a task is, the less matters of confidence need to enter the equation. And of course, it is possible for the improbable to happen, regardless whether you have any confidence in it's happening or not. I'm not suggesting for a minute that confidence is a logically necessary condition for success. That is strictly impossible to achieve anything without believing in yourself and the likelihood of attaining your goals. You may be able to succeed at all sorts of things without a lick of confidence in your abilities. You can win the lottery without believing for a second that you actually would. Confidence is neither a strictly necessary condition for success nor a guarantee of it. It's just one of the most important facilitating conditions of success that are within our control whenever we face a challenge. And it's one we often can employ in such ways as to raise the objective probability of success for our efforts. Mm. All right, so those two paragraphs was my fool. You know, with leaders are readers challenge, read out loud challenge, since I'm the founder and originator of it. Uh, I, I really focus on comprehension. Because I don't like reading without digesting every paragraph and every sentence, right? So, Tom Morris, he goes on to say that he's not suggesting at all that confidence is necessary in order for you to achieve any success. He said you can achieve success whether you're not confident at all. He said, he said you don't need a lick of confidence in your abilities um, to win. He said you could win the lottery without believing for a second that you would. He said confidence isn't necessary for success, nor is it a guarantee of success. Confidence isn't a guarantee of your success either. Right? He says, it's just, he said just based on the results, based on his study, based on his examination, based on the art of achievement, right? Based on the, the, the commonalities of successful people, confidence is just one of those important conditions, right? That are within our control when we face a challenge. We can employ confidence to increase the probability of success in our results. Self-trust is the first secret of success. Ralph Waldo Emerson. All right, we're going to this next two pages, or next two paragraphs. The attitude of confidence is an important facilitator. Okay, hold on. The attitude of confidence is an important facilitator of success for a variety of reasons. First, confidence in our abilities will launch us into action much more boldly. Right, that's number one. Confidence in our abilities will launch us into action much more boldly. When I used to work corporate, right? When I used to uh, run a bunch of sales offices and, you know, be on these conference calls with, you know, these vice presidents, uh, these major corporations and, 
you know, they're they talking about, you know, sales and we be at these seminars and, you know, training, trying to figure out how to go from, you know, my little $70,000 a year to break over $100,000 and stuff like that. So I'm learning, you know, how to build and train and develop people and teams and all that type of stuff. And, and they used to always say that someone's, someone's performance level is directly related to their confidence on whether they can get the job done or not, how well they can do the job, how their confidence, their self-image, and their ability to uh, uh, do the job is directly related to their confidence. Mm. So confidence in our abilities will, will launch us into action much more boldly. As we saw earlier, there are things to be learned in any venture that are accessible only when we are moving out into the world and making things happen. Confidence gets us moving. Confidence keeps us moving. Confidence positions us to learn. Oh, Tawan, the name of this book is The Art of Achievement. Mastering the Seven Seas of Success in Business and Life by Tom Morris. The Art of Achievement. Um, I had this book for a while. I lost my place. Second, confidence allows us a freer flow of our deeper energies and efforts to overcome the challenges along the way that might squelch the initiative in a less confident person. Let's face it, the nobler we are, wait, the nobler and more, let's face it, the nobler and the more exalted the goal is, the more difficult it is usually, the more difficult it usually will be to attain. Without a fairly strong confidence in what we're doing, we'll less likely persist in the face of defeat, discouragement, apparent failure, and postponed results. The history of worthwhile discoveries, inventions, and creative efforts in a history of trouble, hardship, and stubborn persistence through it all. All right, cool. So now, these next two paragraphs. Tom Morris talking about... He, he gave us reasons. He just gave us a, a, a variety of reasons of why confidence is important, why it's an important facilitator or faculty to our success. Not only does it make us act uh, much more boldly, uh, but, it, but and it, it gets us moving and keeps us moving and positions us to learn, but that confidence also allows us uh, freer access and a deeper uh, access uh, to uh, efforts and untapped energies, right? Uh, because in the face of obstacles, we, we know that we're going to have to overcome challenges anyway. All good will be attacked, Right? And, and it's our confidence. It's only through our confidence that we'll persist. That's what he says. Only through our confidence will we per persist in the face of defeat, discouragement, and apparent failure. Only through our confidence. He said through our postponed results. He said without a, surely, without a fairly strong confidence in what we're doing, we'll less likely persist in the face of defeat, discouragement, apparent, apparent failure, and postponed results. Mm. He said, the history of worthwhile discoveries, inventions, and creative efforts is a history of trouble, hardship, and stubborn persistence through it all. Thomas Edison, um, he the one, Thomas Edison is the one who gets credit for the uh, light bulb or whatever, um, but he went through 10,000 failures he found he found 10,000 ways that didn't work before before he found the way that did. He went through so many different uh, obstacles. How many times are we willing to stand uh, in the midst of failure and setbacks before we quit and give up? Right? How long? Like. Our confidence, on whether we can win or not, whether our, our confidence and our abilities to whether we can win or not is what's going to determine that. It's going to determine 
if if this apparent failure or this postponed result will make us quit or persist. It's one or the other. There is also a third reason for the importance of confidence. Hardly anything worth doing in the world can be done by one person completely alone. Our best efforts are usually our best efforts usually bear fruit as a result of the supporting efforts of other people. When you stop to think about it, the network of relationships underlying any significant success is often nearly mind-boggling. Just think of your own teachers, mentors, associates, friends, and acquaintances, along with the often crucial role they have played in the positive things you've experienced. A star athlete depends on his coaches and teammates. An actor depends on his writers, directors, producers, as well as fellow cast and crew members. An executive depends on uh, employees and any salesperson relies on the contracts and references. A healthy self-confidence and a strong faith in the prospects of your work will inspire you, inspire those around you to give themselves more wholeheartedly and what you are are doing together. It's something like a universal psychological law. Confidence unleashes potential in both an individual and in a team. Alright, that's Leaders of Readers Challenge, hashtag Leaders of Readers. I'm King Leon X, KLX, UBVOA, the Human Liberator. Uh, This was a Leaders of Readers Challenge. Check out my website, kingleonx.com and you could also purchase my book, Freedom of Speech, at Amazon and at kingleonnext.com and right here on Facebook. So stay grateful and preserve the essence.